for this cabinet here, I'm gonna go ahead and start making some repairs as it has quite a few things that need to be glued, um, fixed, and just overall um, repaired before I can do any uh, painting to this piece. I decided to keep the original um, ventilation holes on this piece, but there is a few that I think were added on that I'm just going to go ahead and wood fill. And to make sure my wood fill doesn't just go right through, I'm going to go ahead and use some painter's tape on the inside. To wood fill these holes, I'm going to go ahead and use some Elmer's wood filler. This is just their light brown wood fill. So there's the wood fill there. I'm just going to use my spackle knife and fill in all these little holes. I'm going to go ahead and work on filling this gap here. It looks like a piece of wood kind of just chipped out. So I'm going to go ahead and line up a piece of wood here and just kind of mark it there, tape it there. So that way when I put all my wood filler in and remove it, I have a nice clean line. I'll let this dry and move on to repairing, uh, I think, the doors on the front here. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and fix up this shelf. I'm going to add some supports underneath and then glue that original piece in. I really like the design. Um, again, this was like a record cabinet, so I believe these cuts were made to store that. So I want to keep that original to the piece. I'm just going to add some supports and repair it. So I went ahead and removed all the hinges and got the doors completely off and ready to repair. So I got sent over a few products from Star Bond, um, and this is actually going to be my first time trying it, so I'm trying it live on camera so you guys can get my honest review of these products. They sent me over a few different ones. Um, there is a spray glue, and I believe these are their glues here, and then there is their thick gap filler, and I think it comes in black as well, but for what I am working on, um, the antique cabinet there. I'm going to be using their regular medium brown glue. I'm super excited to try this. I've heard um, amazing things about it. Um, and again, they sent these over to me to try. And if it's good, I'm definitely going to recommend it to you guys. And I do have a discount code down below. So we'll see how it goes. Um, and then I will let you guys know that code. And again, everything will be linked down below. To repair the doors, I went ahead and grabbed the Star Bond glue in the medium, and this is their brown glue. I thought this way, if it were to drip at all, it would blend in with the original color of this piece. So here is where I'm going to be adding my glue. This piece on the door has completely come out. So I'm going to add some glue in all these little spaces and then clamp it together. Um, and I have to read how long this takes to dry, but I will let it dry for the recommended time and then let you guys know how it is. I'm just gonna go ahead and clamp this so it can dry nice and tight. So this drawer here has this little stopper piece, but it's pretty loose. Um, I think it's just nailed in. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some glue in the seam here and then clamp it together. So I have everything clamped and glued. I believe it takes 40 minutes to dry. So in 40 minutes, I will remove all my clamps um, and hopefully everything is nice and dry and I can start sanding. So I ended up letting all of these pieces sit overnight just because I had to work on something else. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and remove all of my clamps. My glue has been sitting. So let's remove everything and then get sanding. So 
So everything so far looks really good. Um, I'm definitely happy with the glue. Everything seems super solid, sturdy. But um, I think it'll be the real test on this top piece here because there's no screws or anything there. I just put glue so we can see how that goes. So here is the glue I used. I wanted to say thank you to Starbond for sending me this and for letting me test it out. I do still have a few more of their products I'm gonna test out in a few other videos, but I definitely recommend this glue. And if you guys are interested, I do have a discount code. I will put it here. I believe it is FF by Sarah, and you can uh, use that for 10% off your next order. <laughs> To sand down this piece, I ended up using a 120 grit sandpaper and then I went over it with a 220 grit sandpaper to smooth out any little wiggles or any areas where the finish was still on. The mask I am wearing to sand this piece down is an RZ mask and I will link it down below for you. I find it super easy to breathe in and comfortable because the strap just wraps around the back of my neck. Then it was time to go ahead and clean this piece. I went ahead and used my TSP and then went back and cleaned it with some water just to make sure there was no residue left on the piece. Once it dried, I was ready to prime this piece and I'm using my favorite primer. This is the Zinzer Bin Shellac Face Primer. This stuff has gotten pretty expensive with the current pandemic, but it is so worth it. I will still continue to use it. It blocks any um, stains or anything that's going to come up from the wood. Sometimes you can get yellowing. It could be from previous finishes, previous stains, um, maybe even cleaning products. So this way you're blocking all of that. To apply the primer, I am just using a half inch brush from Dollarama. I find these work best for this type of primer. And then I I'm using a microfiber roller and I did one full coat on this whole piece. So now that the primer's dried, I'm just gonna go ahead and take some 320 sandpaper and I'm just going to lightly sand off any of the bumps or ridges. So I'm just gonna make sure I have a super smooth finish for when I go to paint. Now I'm just gonna take this microfiber cloth with some water and just give it a good clean before I start painting. So before I start painting, I'm just gonna prop it up on these little furniture wheels. That way I can get it off the floor and make sure I get a good paint finish. Okay, so to paint the piece, I'm gonna be using Benjamin Moore Advanced Line. This is in their pearl finish. And I'm gonna be using the color Hail Navy. I have a microfiber roller here that I'm going to be using. These are my favorite. I'll link them down below. And then I just have a purdy brush. This is their extra large firm uh, collection. You want to make sure your roller is super saturated. This will help avoid seeing any strokes, roller marks when you start painting. 
when I apply this paint, I like to brush any of the edges first and then go over it with my roller, making sure everything is super smooth. This paint is really self-leveling, so you're going to be left with a nice finish. Once the piece was done, I moved on and did the doors and I did want to state that I had to end up doing three coats of primers on these doors because for some reason um, in certain areas they were bleeding through and I think it was just a lot of the original finish and maybe oils from people's hands opening and closing them. I didn't notice any bleed through anywhere else but on the back of the doors. To stain the top of the piece here, I'm going to go ahead and use my linen white stain by Varathane and I'll probably do one to two coats of this. To apply it, I'm just wearing some gloves and my blue shop cloths. These are just ones that you throw out after you use them. They're super good and I purchased them, I believe, in bulk at Costco. So to apply the stain, I am just wiping a bunch on all over the piece, making sure I'm getting in all the corners, and then I am just wiping it back um, following the direction of the wood grain. That way I'm not left with any funny swooshes or anything like that from the stain. And I'm just making sure I'm wiping off all the excess so I get a nice even finish. And now I'm going to go ahead and repeat this process to the doors. I do still need to go ahead and give these corners a quick sand before I stain this one. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and do this one here. So now that I got my stain on there, I'm just going to go ahead and do my third coat of paint. To get into all of the small cracks here, I'm just going to go ahead and use this brush from Home Hardware. It is a one inch brush and I believe it was around $7. picking up some new hardware for the piece. This way these handles will cover the original um, handle holes and I can put that right over top. I am going to be changing the color of these. I'm going to be using a mix of these two golds here. I have the Rust-Oleum 
metallic and this is in the color um, satin bronze and then I have this gold here from Beauty Tone Home Hardware and this is just their um, lacquer metallic in gold. So I don't have too much of this one here and this one's my favorite so I'm going to do the first coat um, in this gold here and then go over top with this one. But you can kind of see the difference between the two. This one is a more um, yellowy I would say and this one is more of a brass uh, has like a brass tone to it so now I'm going to go ahead and top coat the top of this piece I'm going to be using Verathane in their diamond wood finish. This is my favorite top coat over stain um, And over certain kinds of paint like fusion mineral paint this stuff works really good on So I'm just going to be using my foam brush to apply it. I have two different sizes here So to apply this I am using the same technique as the stain But with this little foam brush and making sure to get all the corners first and then wiping back following the direction of the wood grain to make sure I get everywhere. And this stuff is kind of hard to see when you're putting it on. So make make sure um, you go over it and do about three to four coats. That way you know you covered everywhere and that it's super durable. I also went ahead and did the same process on the doors and I did three coats. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the handles on and I'm going to be using my Craig Jig hardware kit in order to drill the holes evenly on both sides. holes drilled for this side. I'm just going to test this out. Perfect. So I can screw that in. And now I just need to go ahead and do this side. To tell from these clips, but the doors are slightly off from each other. One is taller than the other. And I tried switching the hinges. The doors were in the right spot. I can't remember if when I started this, they weren't lining up either, or if it was something that I had done, or maybe because I had switched the hinges, it reset um, and something wasn't right so if you have any tips on how to fix this issue these hinges are kind of inset to the door so I wasn't too sure um, if replacing them would help or maybe replacing them with larger hinges if you are a furniture flipper or anyone with any expertise in this please let me know down in the comments because I would love to fix this and give this cabinet more of a symmetrical look
guys are enjoying the video so far. Before I get to the final makeover, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to Starbond for sending me their products to review in this video. Um, I still have a few more of their products that I would love to review in some future videos. But just to recap, I used it to glue down the doors and it's held up great. So I definitely would recommend and I have a discount code for you guys. I will put it on the screen here and I will link it down below. But let's get to the reveal. here is the final look of the piece let me know what you guys think down below in the comments and if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and i will see you with another furniture flipping video next week bye guys Bye.